beautiful. Perfect. My controls have completely disappeared off my screen. Thank you. All right. Um, the a link to the recording. Yeah, I can send this group a link to the recording for sure. That's no problem at all. All right. So you all are the source of brilliant ideas. So what is the difference between a blog and a website and a website with a blog? What do you know? <laughs> my Zoom controls got the Zoomies. Yes, they did. <laughs> Let's start here. What's the difference between a blog and a website? Is there a difference? Okay, Linda started answering right away. Thank you. A website is more informational and a blog is more like a journal. Okay, um, that that's an interesting thing that you say there. Um, Blogs can definitely be very journal uh, journal focused, but they don't always have to be. Blogs can also be informational as well. Um, websites can also be more informational. Um, let's see. I hear that they are the same, but the format is different. Static paces versus regularly updated posts. Yeah, Michelle, you're hitting the nail on the head with that one. Um, and the difference is pretty blurry sometimes. And I think that the short answer is that a blog is actually a type of website is how I would do that. So a website usually has static, unchanging pages, right? Like think about like a local business, your dentist office or something, your doctor's office. They will have a page that has like their location and their phone number and how to contact them and maybe like an about us. And that information doesn't change very often. Meanwhile, a blog, like a I don't know, maybe a medical blog or a blog about dentistry <laughs> would probably be exploring different topics that way. And that would change regularly as it's updated. Um, so I can see that the journal connection, just that you, you write frequently and it updates quite a bit. And some websites have blog pages. So yeah. Do we want to add anything else onto that, Catherine? What do you think? Did I cover it? <laughs> well, yeah, I like what Linda just added too, that, you know, as your example with the dentist, you can have a business site with the blog mm -hmm. as a as a side thing to uh, it can help bring in new customers. Also, search engines like regularly updated fresh content. So a blog or a news section gives you sort of a built in way to provide that to both your visitors and to search engines. So it's good for multiple reasons. Yeah. Frequent updates means that the information is usually relevant and up to date. <clears throat> cool. OK, so that's the very, very basic. So. The first thing that I'm curious about is what is the topic of your blog for 2023? So all of you are here because you want to get started blogging. Yeah. What do you want that blog to be about? So some of my blogs are about parrots. <laughs> squawk, squawk. Um, I have a family recipes blog that is just for my family recipes so I don't lose them. Um, I also have like a random personal one for whatever is just on my mind. Um, and the latest one I have for 2023 is one about like open source teaching and contributing to WordPress and just kind of my adventures uh, in WordPress. Um, so yeah, so what, what what's yours about this year? Let's see, one, one person says everything, personal finances, building wealth one penny at a time. Ooh, I need that. That sounds like a great blog. <laughs> Ooh, beginning WordPress with 2023 hints. Yes. Oh, I love that. What a great idea. Uh, know it, how to use WordPress. Okay. Yeah. Content for learners of Arabic. Oh, on graded reading. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. These are such great topics. Oh, I love it. So Michelle, um, you said everything. That's kind of what my random personal one is today. Um, <laughs> for whatever is on my mind, I started it just for funsies, just to kind of like unload some of the nonsense that was like crashing around in my head. Um, and I found that as the more I wrote, like my blogs tended to fall into like two categories, right? One was like about this autoimmune condition that I have. That's a little bit personal, but I, I talk about like what it was like to go through that and to get diagnosed with it and things like that. Like a lot of my blogs are either about that or they're like relationship advice. <laughs> so they are not related at all. And it definitely like impacts how many people find my blog? Like my friends might read it, but that's it. So <laughs> if I want to reach more people, like having a, a more specific focus about what it is that is is near and dear to your heart uh, can help you with that. So that's what today is all about. Alberta condominium over owners. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> my photography. Yes. Oh, a project journal. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Perfect. This is great. I'm so excited. <sighs> okay. 
So my first question is, have you ever started a blog? Not my first question. This is my second question. Uh, have you ever started a blog and then like sort of forgot about it? What happened? <laughs> you can write in the chat or speak aloud. The choice is yours. I'm trying to think about blogs I've abandoned. Ah, lack of time. <laughs> Others have. Okay, okay. Let's uh, let's maybe move over to our collaborative workspace and and try practicing with this. I'm gonna copy this link today. <laughs> Laura says, "No, I don't. I don't have a problem with that. I'm an introvert. <laughs> That's great. I love that you have that outlet, Laura. I can go months without posting on my blog and I feel guilty about it, but I tend to need to feel inspired. Okay, yes. So we all have several blockers. All right, so I am I just dropped a link into the chat that's going to bring you to this collaborative workspace here today. <laughs> so we're going to practice with this because we've got a couple of things here that are going to help us dig deeper into our motivations and, and what drives us here. Ah, Beautiful. I see people hopping in here. You'll notice that this is anonymous. So again, respect yourself, everybody in this room, but grab over here. Like the biggest thing is like what when you first think about blogging, what have been some of your biggest blockers? Like I saw Catherine mentioned inspiration, right? That is a huge one for me as well. What else? So we are on slide number two. Grab one of these and move it over. I'm going to make sure that this, yep, everybody can edit. <laughs> All right, I see somebody grabbing a, a, a block. Yes. Oh, I love it. Okay, uh, not knowing about WordPress. That's a definite big blocker. Do you mind if I write that down, Lorena? Ah, that's totally fine. So if you're on mobile, that's, that's fine. Um, all right, let's do, uh, what was it? No knowledge of WordPress. And again, if you can't participate because you're on a phone, that's totally fine. You can definitely just watch. I see someone wrote introverted, sharing personal information. Yeah, that's one of my big concerns with blogging too, is, is that I do share a lot of really personal things. And uh, it's it's interesting because I actually made the best friend of my life because of Live Journal of all things. We're still in touch to this day. And it was because we just shared our personal blogs with each other. Um, but at the same time, like I have friends who have posted things that come back to bite them a little bit. So I mean, how much do you share? I mean, what what's the line between oversharing something that, you know, might make you unsafe versus <laughs> sharing enough that people can connect? <laughs> Working on too many projects at once. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> Spreading myself too thin. Yes, I have that issue quite a bit as well. Motivation to keep it regular. Yes, that is one of the things that we are going to be addressing um, with today's workshop for sure. Feeling, okay, that, that one's, there's one here. I'm unemployed. I feel like I should focus on job applications. So one of the things that I think is really cool about blogging um, is that if you are looking in a, in a particular field, um, blogging about the things you know and your experience um, and connecting with people that way can really build a reputation and you can find work that way. Um, the reason that I end, ended up at Automatic at all is because of my parrot blog. Um, I started that blog specifically because I wanted to break into working in WordPress. Uh, so it it can sometimes feel like, hey, maybe this isn't the thing that I should be doing, um, but it can bring really great benefits, financial job and otherwise. Let's see. Can't add to the whiteboard how to do that. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're going to click on one of these boxes over here to the left. As I move it around, you just move it over here somewhere and double click, and then you can type. This is our practice session. <laughs> so Sarah, somebody asked if uh, we can lock our answers, quote unquote. I didn't see a way to do that. So I don't know if you know, Sarah, but I said just if we could please all not touch anybody else's text 
and uh, yeah. leave, leave it as is. That would be appreciated. That's, that's a good norm. Yes. Thank you, Catherine. So yeah, try not to, to write on other people's stuff. It might be, some people might've grabbed the same one. So I could see that might be maybe being a technological issue. Um, but yeah. Okay. Looking for collaborators was one. All right. All right. So we've got a lot of blockers here. And I think a lot of these are, we're going to overcome in today's workshop, which is really, really exciting. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, let's keep on keeping on. Uh, let's see here. So we also have a writing organizer. Oh, you can tell I'm a middle school teacher, huh? So <laughs> what you're going to do um, you're going to have a Google document that looks like this. Now you're welcome. If you don't have Google documents, you're welcome to just like copy and paste it, write it in your local thing. If you've got like a, a notebook, you can just, it's all blurry. It's just a WordPress notebook. If you wanted to write it down there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share this. Anyone with the link can view this and I'm going to do this with you. What we're going to do is I'm going to go to file make a copy. When I do that, Sarah's 2023, you can name it whatever you want, Sarah's 2023 blog, I'm going to call it blog brainstorm, make a copy. So all of us started identifying a topic. Um, so let's start by putting what, what your topic might be about. So we, we had answers from everything from like bourbon and craft beer to everything. So we, we're going to get a little bit more secular, whatever is on your mind here. Um, I know mine, mine's kind of a broad topic. Um, I think it's under the umbrella teaching within WordPress. I don't know if it's within, like, there's a lot there. There's a lot there that I'm, I want to I want to get into. So just write down your topic to start. Um, and as you edit this, um, these boxes can get bigger and smaller. Right now, it's this beautiful little like three pager, but it will get a little bit messier. So keep that in mind today. All right. And Catherine's making a great point. You do need to be logged into a Google account to do that. Otherwise, you can just use a notepad or Microsoft Word or whatever whatever writing uh, you have for that. So, and then we're going to start deeply thinking about why. Because the difference between getting started and having an active a uh, frequently updated blog that you are passionate about really starts here. So in box number two, it asks you, hey, why do you want to write this blog? Um, think about why you decided to start this blog. Uh, think about the conversations you've had, the things that prevented you from doing it. Think about the moment that you decided to get started. Like what, what was that tipping point? What changed or influenced you to take action? So you can answer any of those questions, none of those questions, I'm going to write with you. Um, so I'm going to pop this out of here so I can write so you can see the timer. So we're going to have two minutes. Just start writing, just free write anything that comes to mind. Why do you want to write this blog? And go. There will be a sound when it's done.
Okay, that is time. Um, I don't think there's a mobile version of this now. I'm sorry. Oh, I, that is something I will keep in mind for next time um, to see if I can't do something a little bit more mobile friendly. It didn't occur to me that people would be viewing from there. So, <laughs> so one one thought for for Nomad. Um, I think Google Docs and Sheets and all that work better when you have the individual apps. So if you are in a situation where you can quickly download the Google Docs app, you may be able to open it and work on it better there. You could try that. I know that's the case when I need to work on a, a Google spreadsheet in the app. Yeah, Laura says you need the app on mobile. So you could try that. Okay, we're now gonna move down here. So I wrote some stuff that is a little personal, but I'm going to put it back into here so you can see it. Um, so I just kind of freeform wrote about why this blog is important to me. So I'm going to look at it and decide what what of this do I want to share um, if I were if I were to break this down. Um, so we're going to move now to our collaborative workspace to slide number three, and let's look at why you want to blog. Um, because I mean, this is really identifying our ambitions, right? This is going to help us to translate why we want to do this into tangible goals and break them into, down into milestones and things like that. So when I first started blogging, <laughs> I mostly just wanted an online journal, <laughs> which is not a great use of a blog for me anyway, because again, it's, it's deeply personal. Um, but when I look at my reason why, it, it's, it's to writing to inform somebody else. So I'm going to grab one of these over here. And if you're just joining us, we have a collaborative workspace here. Um, we have a collaborative workspace here. Um, why do you want to blog? So to make a difference in people's lives. That's definitely one reason um, that I have as well. Um, I think I want to spread awareness of different ways um, you can utilize a teaching degree. <laughs> that was something that was really, really tough for me. Um, other common things. Um, I want to start getting the ideas and stories and information just out of my head and into a format where I can share. Um, sharing my ideas is a big one. Sharing my ideas. Okay, to help others understand full site editing and all the new things in the site editor, yes. To show what's going on in the local food and drink scene, to add value and visibility and collaborate with local establishments, yes. Okay, um, let's see, I see like, I want to demonstrate my expertise. We're all experts in something, so I'm going to put that somewhere. To increase website traffic, to possible memberships, to share knowledge. Yeah, I love that to share knowledge with newbies, give readers one spot. Yes, these are such great ideas. Okay, okay. I love that people are, are kind of moving things around and, and playing with it to make it a little bit more. I'm going to move my, my top one over here. There we go. Okay. So there are so many different ideas here. I love it. Okay. Where did my notes go? Let's do maybe 10 more seconds. Any other ideas in our collaborative workspace today?
right, I'm going to switch back over to our slides. <sighs> okay, what did I, what did I mean by that? <laughs> I feel like this is slightly out of order. Hold on just a second while I go back to yesterday. Okay, yes. Come on. Did I do this correctly? Yes, okay. So the next question that you're gonna ask yourself is the same question, which is why to your why? So whether you're creating a personal blog just for you, you're you know writing a travel journal or recipes like I like to, you're growing an audience for your book or attracting customers to your business, if you don't deeply understand why you're doing this, it will become difficult to maintain forward momentum um, and you begin to lose steam for creating your blog posts. And that's definitely something that that's happened to me because when I when I first started my parrot blog, the reason that I was doing it was to learn WordPress um, so that I could you know, be, become a happiness engineer with wordpress.com. And like that was, that was a whole thing that I did. Um, but I haven't updated that in like two years because I, I didn't, <laughs> while I'm an expert on parrots, like my why behind it wasn't to like share my knowledge with par with, uh, of parrots with other people. So that, that really definitely took away, um, from my motivation. So some of these, um, when we first ask ourselves, hey, why do I want to write this blog? There are some surface level reasons um, that we can come up with. And they're a super great starting point. So when you have things like this, like sharing my ideas or uh, offer reusable short tutorials for my web development customers, what need is that trying to solve? Why do you want to do that? Uh, to, let's see, to show what's going on in the local food and drink scene, to add value and visibility and collaborate with local establishments. That's so cool. Why do you want to do that though? What is like, and it, it might seem a little obvious. It might seem a little bit like it, it's basically just digging deeper, right? Um, I mean, I, I'm probably the target audience for this one here, you know, <laughs> what's going on in the local food and drink scene. This helps so many people. How? How would that help me? Well, when I think about it, if we're going to dig deeper here, um, I think about people like me who are foodies who don't know that something new, you know, exists or that there are events going on in the community. If I don't know about it, I can't show up. I can't support those. Like this helps connect customer to really valuable experiences um, and places. So there, there's a lot more to that there. So I want you to explore your why a little bit deeper. So like for here, um, you, you can see some of mine here. Um, when you're deeply exploring this, when you look at your first reason here, why do you want to do the things that you want to do? What impact do they have? And specifically, a really good way to do this is, hey, what happens if you don't start your blog in 2023? And that's kind of a scary thought, um, especially if you're really passionate and motivated about it. So I'm going to give you another two minutes. It was two minutes long enough, short enough, just right. <laughs> Goldilocks in it. I think we'll stick with two minutes here, but let's take a few minutes to write together. And you're going to hear that sound go off when you're done. And I'm going to write with you.
And that is time. I need to get a better sounding alarm next time, I think, because that is <laughs> a little jarring. Finish your sentence. So why to the why? Deeply exploring your why. If you don't, so for me, if I don't start this blog now, um, a lot of the things that I'm learning about like teaching in open source and like kind of training in public uh, might just be lost to the ether. And that doesn't help training team contributors. That doesn't help anybody who wants to, you know, teach WordPress. That doesn't help other people who work in other open source things. And that, that seems like a problem, right? Like we don't all want to have to learn the same lessons. This is one way to aggregate that. So that's one of my reasons why. Um, and if I don't write this blog, that's another teacher who doesn't really know uh, their way out of a hard place. There's a huge percentage of new teachers who don't make it past their fifth year. Um, and then what that, right? And writing this type of blog with a, a, a probably a strong audience geared towards teachers, um, it might really either impact their ability to contribute to open source or like it did for me, uh, help them with their lives. So I don't, I don't want to miss those people. So for you, um, would anyone like to tell us, you know, what you've discovered today, either in the, the chat or out loud? What are the deeper reasons for wanting to write your blog today? I really like that Linda talked about how this made her think beyond her personal reasons and really think about like what the readers want. <laughs> That's great. Anyone else like to share? I want to document my accomplishments, share knowledge of new editing practices. Yes. For people who can't afford to hire someone. Yes. But learn to update their business websites to grow their business. Linda, that is such a huge need. There are so many people who are stepping into full site editing and, and, you know, they're, they're working with it for the first time. That's great. Ah, to pass down my experience, help people more intentionally, Lorena. I love that. Someone once told me that we need to really share our stories because they become somebody else's survival guides. And gosh, isn't that true? <laughs> To share spiritual knowledge and how to manifest spiritual experiences. Yes. Oh, I love it. These are so great. Okay. So it looks like we are definitely, <laughs> we are definitely digging into our reasons why. For the project journal, I would like to share my experiences for future project managers. Yes. Ah, oh, <laughs> bring it forward to the, to other project managers. That's great. Oh, I love it. These are so great, y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much for your active and thoughtful participation today. Uh, I love it. Okay. Learn by doing. Practice to become a better writer. You know, Judia, I, I apologize if I uh, misspoke, uh, misspoke your name, um, but as a writing teacher, the best way to learn how to write is by writing. Uh, I vouch for that inside and out. So great insight. <laughs> oh, that's great. Any final thoughts there? You already, oh, we didn't even need to do that. Okay, we're gonna skip that slide. <laughs> so I did dig a little deeper here just in case we we struggled. Um, like for example, like I wanted to share my experience with other people, right? This is a, a good kind of surface level thing. Um, but I was gonna, I was gonna break down further, but I don't actually think that y'all need that. Like y'all are embracing this really well. So that's so great. <laughs> okay, cool. So I highly recommend at this point or in the future, um, as you're exploring your reasons why, and you're really looking at that, um, I recommend grabbing a sticky note or setting a desktop background or, uh, whatever else, and really writing down what that reason would be. So if you're really looking at this, at your heart reason, the reason that I want to write, I'm going to put it into one sentence because it's pretty powerful for me. And that is going to be, and I'm literally writing this down. You can always set a reminder to write it down. If you don't have a writing utensil now, I should probably put that in the materials, huh, Catherine? Learning, learning experiences. Um, 
my reason why is I want to empower teachers. Empower teachers in open source and beyond. I think when I say that, it, I feel that resonating um, in a big way. And you, you'll, you'll know that you found your why when you kind of have that aha moment where that light bulb goes off above your head, or I don't know, you feel something kind of open up a little in your heart. I'm gonna take this sticky note and I am going to stick it to my desk. <laughs> so um, the other thing that people recommend doing is to schedule a meeting with yourself in your calendar uh, to revise that why. So if you'd like to, I don't really like doing this for myself. Oh, hey, there's my big old automatic calendar. Okay. Um, if you schedule time in your calendar, um, in the future, like every, I know I'm going to get started in January, but I know I'm probably going to struggle in March. Revisit your reasons why. You can, oh, where to go? Take your link to this document and put it here in the description. And you can make this a recurring task. This makes you, if you schedule this for yourself, this does actually make you come back and look at this again. So in March, if you've written like two blog posts and forgotten about it, oh, hey, there it is on your calendar. You can see it on mine. It's one technique to make sure that you continue on. So, yeah. Man, come on thing. <laughs> My computer has been full of technical issues. So the next step here is exploring not just why you want it, but what do you want to accomplish? What is the end goal here? What does your blog look like? So right now it's probably just an idea percolating in your head and your heart. Um, but what is it that you actually want to accomplish? So some people want to, <laughs> they want to be the new Instagram. They want to make this incredible, like thriving community, lots of people involved, reaching millions of people, which is great. I, I'm a little bit smaller <laughs> with what I would want to accomplish with my blog. So if you close your eyes and visualize what you want your blog to look like at the end of 2023, what is it that you are hoping? to accomplish? Who are you hoping to reach? How active do you want it to be? How many blogs do you want? Where did I put my, oh, I lost it. <laughs> so I'm going to write as well. Um, so let, let's just talk a little bit about that though. So we're talking about what now, which is again, a very, it seems like a very simple question. Um, the why is about your motivation. The what is how you're actually going to measure your success. So the why keeps you going. The what is the final product, right? Um, so what is it that you're hoping to achieve? What is the big vision at the end of this? So your what I think about how to say this. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it's really just what is that impact? So let's take a couple of minutes to answer some of these questions. What is it that you hope to achieve? What will people do with that information? So what will your audience achieve? Let's take two minutes, reset, and write. Oh, we are writing these in uh, number four. So it's going to be here. Good question, Laura. So what will it look like? Who will it reach? What need will it fulfill? 
for your audience. I'm gonna reset that just to make sure that we have enough time. And Catherine makes a good point. You can share in the chat as well. I just, I tend to go document first so that you have it. Okay, that is time. You can see what I want here. I, I read a little bit of what a couple of other people wrote and was like, I don't think I want that for me because <laughs> it's, it's just not for my brand, but it's really cool to kind of see your ideas. So if you feel confident, you can copy and paste this into the chat. You can share, um, allow whatever makes you happy. You can just pull parts of part of it out. But what is the vision that you have for your blog today? Cassie, yes, readers will apply new knowledge to their own works. Ah, I love it. You think like a teacher. <laughs> that application stuff is so huge. I love that you're, you're seeing that you want your readers to be able to do something with that information. We're not just sponges. We are actively making the world a better place with the things that we consume. And I just love that so much. Um, Lorena says, have my readers uh, sign up for my newsletter, buy your coaching services. Yes, to get more listeners to my podcast, to get deals with brands that they can sponsor my content. Yes, that is a totally valid way to, to make a living. And uh, I love it. Let's see. A repository of mini tutorials for each editing task to answer in an FAQ. Yep. Look up editing tasks in WordPress, get a complete and comprehensive answer. Yes. Okay. Any other final thoughts? What, what's your vision? Does anyone else feel comfortable sharing today? I'm just going to double check where we are here just in case. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I'm just having people share in the chat rather than on this. I need to, are we enjoying sharing in here too? Like, is, is this more fun or is writing it in the chat like where it's at for y'all? Just curious. Do you prefer the workspace or the chat? Okay, so the box grabbing is pretty tricky then is what I'm hearing. I like both, okay. Okay, and we're not at goals yet, just so you are aware this is a later, later thing. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks for that temperature check, y'all. I like to kind of get in the moment feedback as well. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So we've identified our driving force, our why that's going to keep us writing in 2023. And we're kind of identifying the blog's purpose, like what it's going to give to our audience, the impact it's going to have on them and the world. So we did this. We explored our what here. 
what you wanted this blog to look like, who you wanted it to impact, how many people you want to reach. That's something that's interesting. How many people do you want to reach? That might be something to put in here. So I, I wrote this in just because it was on my mind. But one of the things that I noticed about my, my parrot blog is probably my most wildly successful blogs is that I, I get quite a few viewers there, but like, it's not like a lot, a lot. It's not like a news website a lot, but like 20 people a day come and visit that, but not many people own birds. So you might identify how many people you want to reach. I think I'd like to reach, you know, half teachers and half like contributors <laughs> and half contributors who are also teachers. You never know. I guess that's 150%. Anyway, this is why I taught English, not math. Okay, Laura, I will be much clearer about where we're going to put our answers. Thank you for that. Okay. So when you're finished, and this one, this one's a little optional. So number five is, is a vision statement. I want to some like what you want to do because it's a reason why. If you want to, you can do this. I I don't know. Right now, for me personally, I'm looking at this and I'm looking at all of the writing that I've done. And I'm like, ah, I can't condense that into a vision statement <laughs> right now. <laughs> so I might, I might skip this right here for right now, but it might be something that I come back to at a later date. So I'm just going to write a little note to myself, come back to this. All right, let's keep moving. Yeah, we're going to skip number five in the Google document. Um, just because I, I feel like this is much more free form. All right, we are now going to set some goals. So now that you can clearly explain why you started down this path and what you wanna get out of it, um, we can start defining tangible goals. Um, so you wanna know where you're, like, <laughs> if you're getting in your car and you're about to start driving, you need to know where you're going usually. Um, but there's, you know, there's a right way to get there and, an efficient way to get there as well. So a lot of goal setting frameworks break down these bigger goals into multiple pieces. So we're gonna break down our goals into three pieces here. We're gonna have goals, we're gonna have milestones and something known as signals. And this is a framework that I'm just kind of exploring. Like I'm just, I'm just new here. So we've got goals, milestones and signals. And that's what we're going to look at next. So, I want you to think about your big picture 2023 goals. So for goals, you generally want to have two to three. So if you're looking at your document, you'll notice you've got goal number one, goal number two, and goal number three. You don't have to have three goals. Um, but yeah, and also like these goals can totally change as your blog and idea um, and ideas do. Um, and it's a really good idea to set new goals as old ones are reached. So a goal example could be something like, I want to build a large and engaged audience that I can monetize, right? We, we saw some people who were like, yeah, I want to, I want to, you know, maybe, maybe monetize some things, be paid for things, like things like that. Um, so you really want to think about that big picture, so take a couple minutes and think about what your goals are for the very, very end of 2023. So if I'm looking at mine, like I, I think I actually put some in here and that's totally fine. I think one of my goals might be this right here, 500 subscribers, right? And my other one, oh my gosh, I can't type. That's fine. Messy first drafts, right? Um, and I think 12 posts. I think those are going to be realistic goals. So I want you to look at yours. So you're going to, you're going to go to your get blogging. Number six, what are your big picture 2023 goals? And then we may share them um, in the, at the end of this, but take two minutes, really think about what you want to, what you want to be able to do, something achievable, something measurable. I'm going to do this as well. Out of here, though. You know what? Let me try this because that might make it a little bit clearer where we're writing. Timer is up here.
Okay, those are gonna be mine, I think. Right, finish the sentence that you're on. I don't like the beeping sound, so let's let's call that time. So you can see my goals are here. Let's hop over to our collaborative workspace to slide number five over here. Or if this isn't working for you, you can write in the chat here. So if you can't write Google Doc, share here, and I will write it into the workspace. Oh, I see some good goals here. Create one blog post a week, have enough tutorials to help someone create a basic website. Yeah. Full repository of tutorials. Yes. I like this. 36 blog posts. Ooh, you're ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can only commit to one blog post a week. I have so much going on right now. <laughs> 10 memberships, 25 subscribers. I love how measurable those are. Establish a writing practice. Oh, yes. Writing is a habit. That cannot be uh, overstated how important it is to just establish that writing practice. 10 minutes a day can go so far. So far. Any other goals for you today? I love that phrase, become a thought leader. That's so cool. So earlier, someone was mentioning how they wanted to, um, they wanted to potentially like, you know, be, if they felt like they should be like looking into getting a job, that is one way that you can absolutely do that is by becoming a thought leader and just sharing the things that you know, the things that you aggregate, the things that you observe and can comment on. Um, that's a huge way to build your ethos, build your reputation. And a lot of people do find jobs that way in kind of a big way. <laughs> Collaborate with like-minded people. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So one, some food for thought. So I love the idea of becoming a thought leader through your content. Obviously, I, I just, <laughs> that resonates with me. My question to you as you're looking at your goals for things like that. Um, what does that look like? Think to yourself who you know who is a thought leader, either in a field that you yourself want to go into, in another topic, whatever. Who is a thought leader and how do you know it? Um, one person that I, I think about like that might be like Blair Amani, her Smarter in Seconds. She writes this incredible educational content and you learn things that are, are really uh, mind opening um, in a big way. Um, but uh <laughs> and and she does that through microblogging right she uses her tiktok and instagram quite a bit so for her it's like daily blogging it's super short it's super sweet she brings other people in um like other people come to her and say hey i want to help and she reaches out to other people as well like there's there's a whole lot there so what does that mean for you and yes i will share the recording of this we've got about half an hour left in today's session um but with that in mind, um, collaborate with like-minded people. Consider putting a number on it. How many people do you want to collaborate with? Do you want to write? I mean, I see one blog post a week. Do you want, I don't know, one blog post every two months to be a collaboration with somebody? I don't know. Oh, Amanda Gorman. Yes. Oh, I don't know nearly as much about her as I should, but I, I have heard her work and it's amazing. Okay, cool. <laughs> so let's continue. And if you have to hop off, you are welcome to continue using this. Um, let's keep going a little faster. Oh my gosh. Okay. So think about 
your 2023 milestones. So the journey of a giant blog or a moderately sized one, whatever, whatever a reasonable blog is for you and your goals. What is your baby step number one? Um, I was going to have us go to what's first, but I feel like this is a little captain obvious. So instead, let's look at number seven in your document here. What are your milestones to walk towards this goal? So what's the first thing that you need to do? So for some of you, it might be, I don't know, <laughs> find a host, right? Once you found a host, what's next? You might purchase a domain. After that, you might set up your blog so it's pretty, right? Like it's basically just, hey, first, what do you do? That's a really small thing, right? First, I'll find a host, then I'll purchase a domain. I'll set up my blog so it's pretty. Um, the next step for me is probably going to be to like draft a list of potential topics. And then after that list is prioritized, uh, or I guess it's prioritized, that might be part of the other one. And you just keep going. So how, like, what, what are your milestones and when do you think that you're going to have these by? So if you're like me and you're just getting started finding a host, purchasing a domain, I know a lot of this stuff, like this is probably, these first are going to take me maybe a day. Um, this is going to probably take me another day. So these might not be, <laughs> your milestones can be as small as this. Like if you're brand new to WordPress, um, if you're brand new to WordPress, for example, and you're not sure which host is going to work for you, or you're not sure like how to purchase a domain name or how to set up your blog, what, what the options are, those might take you a lot longer. And that's totally fine. Um, so like these are itty bitty micro baby steps. Um, so just think about that. Let's, I'm going to set a timer here and just think about what those might be and consider writing by when. That's going to take one day. And then blog set up for me. I'm just going to do this with you. Oop, and that is our time. You'll notice I didn't get quite finished, which is fine. So let's see here. We It's 3.05. Let's actually skip uh, working on this right now. I feel like these are, are intensely personal. Um, and you can always refine this and work on this, right? Like one of the things that I realized as I was going, oh, quarterly checks, see how many subscribers I have in March, analyze which topics had highest engagement. Oh, wait, <laughs> I probably need to find a plugin that allows me to uh, look at my traffic. <laughs> like there's, there's all of that, right? Like I might have something about SEO, I don't know. Um, so let's go ahead and skip ahead, but you should have your plan because now you know 
kind of where you are and what's going to be happening. So you'll notice that I've got a plan out until April. Like this is going to keep me going for the first couple months of the year. That's really, really cool. Um, and you can always do this. Um, you can always copy and paste this and make it even longer. You can erase things like this is yours to do with as you would like. Okay, so we filled in our planner. I always get ahead of myself. So the next thing is known as a call to action. And this is something that was relatively new to me um, as I went over this. I've been blogging for years and just I, I know about call to action buttons, um, but it, it's, it's let, let's talk about that. So a call to action. Um, is a way to, you build this into your content to help you evaluate your progress and the effectiveness of the different strategies and tactics that you're using to grow your audience, to reach different people, engagement, things like that. So a call to action might be something like asking people to subscribe to your email list, right? So if we look at mine over here, um, see how many subscribers I have, like, yeah, that that's something that I want to do. So I probably want some sort of pop-up or an easily uh, accessible um thing where it says, hey, subscribe to my blog. Um, and, and you basically want to ask people, hey, do you want more of this content? Come subscribe. You probably see those all the time, right? That's, that is one call to action. Um, so it might be to visit, visit your site from a social media post or to reblog your uh your, what is it, your blog post on, on social media, right? So, hey, share this on Facebook if it resonated with you. So it's something very specific that someone could do very quickly with your content. Um, and I actually kind of struggle to come up with these calls to action. So let, let's head over to slide number eight in this collaborative workspace over here. <laughs> and Linda, this, is, I, this was news to me too. Like I, I did a lot of research for this and it was, yeah. It was new. So like, what are some calls to action that you've seen on other people's websites? So I've seen people obviously like on YouTube, everyone's like, oh yeah, smash that subscribe button. Right. But so like, what, what is that call to action with WordPress? So subscribe to my blog. It could be a pop-up or button. What are other things you can ask people to do? Um, I've definitely seen people in like recipe blogs be like, hey, did you try this? Like share a picture in the comments. Tell us what you did. Did you make any changes? So like asking people to comment might be another one. Um, asking folks to comment on a particular post. So the one where I'm like, hey, like I really want to invite conversation that's one of my, my goals, right, is to have like 10 people talking about something that I thought about. Wow, that would make me feel so special. I'm going to want to say, hey, what are your thoughts on X? I feel like you want to get specific with that. Um, so like, rather than just what did you think, it's what did you think about X thing or share what you did with Y in the comments. What other things, what other things could we do as a call to action? What have you seen? On author websites, I see a lot of subscribe to my newsletter for exclusive content. That's one that I've seen around. To think, like I'm thinking about like in the context of some of the, the things that you're doing. You might like, I'm thinking about like the brewery one and like the foodie one specifically, right? Like you might say something like, hey, tag me at my social media <laughs> if you went to this food beverage event. Like that's definitely something. A support or a donate button, yes. Other call to actions like businesses do things like book an appointment now. If you're interested in why topic. What else? Any others?
you're doing projects, did you make this project? How did it go? Leave a comment. Leave a comment of what you did on this post. I guess that's just all. <laughs> and these are just specific ones about leaving comments. Okay, I'm not original. You see, this is why we brainstorm. Uh, share this post on social media. I know there are some plugins that allow you to track the number of shares on social media. I think someone correct me if I'm wrong, but share this post on social media, track. track how many shares you get. Ooh, take a survey or send feedback. Oh, that's fascinating. What a great idea. Oh, I love that. Oh, why did I think of that? Ah, oh, many brains. <laughs> I also like, I just want to point out one of them, uh, the buy me a coffee one is interesting because that's sort of like a, a tip, you know, give me a, yeah. you know, it's, it's like a small thing you can do to show a token of your appreciation for someone's content. There are plugins uh, for that or just a PayPal button or something. Yeah, I see that a lot. Hey, did you appreciate my content? Did this help you? Hey, <laughs> toss me three bucks. I'll have some coffee. <laughs> or seven or eight if it's a really fancy coffee, you never know. Depends on where you are in the world too, of course. Go to my YouTube channel, yes. Cross promote with other content creators. Okay, so that's something. Cross promote with other content creators. You might like something like link back to this post on your own website. That's really good for search engine optimization. And that's a really specific and easy thing to do as well. Register for our event now, yeah, okay. So as you're looking at some of your milestones here, you might think about, hey, like which of these calls to actions are your favorite? So the re that's why I put this in here. This is number eight in your, uh, your get blogging with WordPress graphic organizer over here. Um, I want you to look at this list of calls to actions that we made and write down three or four that you really, really like and think about like, how will you know that it's effective? Think about like how you would measure that. So use our brainstorm here and gosh, you all have such brilliant ideas here. Use this, pick your favorite and then ask yourself, how will I know that my call to action worked? And remember, you only want one maybe two calls to action per blog post. I don't know about you, but like when I go into a cooking website and it is subscribed to my newsletter and make sure that you send your email here and read this giant story and then comment and then do this and then do that. Like they, they, they ask too much. <laughs> Some people ask too much and I'm not going to do any of it. So pick one or two per post. Oh, that's so great, Laura, that you could buy five coffees for the exercise videos you use. That's so great. So what are your favorite calls to action? I like that one. Buy me a coffee. <laughs> uh, so for mine, I really like the leave a comment thing. And that the metric for that would be pretty easy, right? Let's I'm just go say number of comments on a post will tell me. But I'm also going to write like get specific, ask a particular question. What else? Sharing this post on social media, I think, is going to be one that I also really like. Share this post on. And for me specifically, it's going to be LinkedIn, I would say, because one of the things that I want to do is kind of become one of those like thought leaders, I guess, right? Just to kind of share, like, I don't want to do that just because I want to be a thought leader. I want to do that to reach people and I need to be trusted to do that. So it's going to be like number of reshares on LinkedIn and interactivity there. That's how I'll know. That's my signal. That's how I'll know. And then... <laughs> Click here to win a special prize. Yes, that one's fun too. <laughs> I really like the survey or feedback as well. That's a really quick way to measure. And you don't have to stick to three here. You can list as many as you want just so that you have this list to refer back to. 
um, my feedback like this one, I will know that I'm being successful number of people who actually took the survey. Kind of important, right? I always, so one member says that they feel weird asking people to subscribe or share on social media. I feel weird about it too, but at the same time, like some people just don't think about it without that nudge, right? Think about how many times, you know, someone's asked you to sign up for something or like you've been, I don't know, I was at Kohl's yesterday, I think, <laughs> not yesterday. I was at Kohl's the other day and they're like, hey, you need to sign up for a card. Would you like to sign up? They're always asking, hey, do you want to sign up? Like, I wouldn't even be aware that there was a credit card you could get with that particular retailer if they didn't ask me that every time I went in there. So it's more of like a subtle suggestion that people can, you know, do something with. Exactly. Like, I think there's a line between inviting people to do something and being pushy mm -hmm. and overbearing. <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a line. Mm -hmm. I agree. Oh, join our petition. Yes. Or read more. Yes. How many people click through on your emails? That's a good one. Oh, I'm going to steal that one too. And then we're going to move on. Read more clicks. This is probably going to be specifically from like number of people who open my emails and actually go to the blog. Okay, cool. I love it. And you all will have access to this collaborative workspace as well. You can keep it forever more. So keep in mind, you can always refer back. So we did this. We brainstormed that. Look at us go. Ugh. So we were going to make an action plan. I figured it was going to take too much time. I was right. We kind of already did that in a smaller way. So we're going to skip this for right now. Um, and we're going to, the next thing, the next two things we're going to talk about are, are pretty closely related. There's like your niche and your audience. So niche is about both what your audience needs and also what you enjoy. Because got to tell you, if you are not having fun at all with your blog, you are not going to be motivated to keep writing. You're just not. So um, consider this, like when you're writing for everyone, it actually means that you are writing for no one, as I have found with my personal blog. Uh, <laughs> I have no particular audience in mind where I'm just like throwing ideas out left and right. And like some of my coworkers read my blog because they they have links to it internally. But that's the other thing. If it wasn't for that, nobody would ever, ever, ever see my blog. Um, and it's because I'm I'm writing with everybody in mind. So why is that? Why is saying, oh, I'm going to write for everybody? How does that reach very few people? Why do you need to know what your niche is, who your audience is? And just to, to be clear, like a blog niche is just, it's another way of referring to the topic that you choose to focus your content on. And it can be as broad or as specific as you want to be. Um, so think about like, maybe you're a writer, right? And you want to blog about fiction in general, um, or you want to categorize your content into multiple things. Um, but think about like what types of books you like to read, right? So for me, I love romance novels. <laughs> I have loved romance novels ever since I got out of my sci-fi phase. And so books that are, you know, like a giant encyclopedia, like when was the last time you picked up an encyclopedia to just sit down and read it for fun, right? An encyclopedia covers everything, every topic under the sun. Yes, you want to promote your blog to people who are excited to read it, who say, oh, yes, I want to read this romance novel, as opposed to here's an encyclopedia that details everything from like the word love to, I don't know, the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I don't know. I don't know if that's even a place. <laughs> um, so for the sake of time, you might want to think about for your niche, like how big is your potential audience with your current topic? Um, when I initially started brainstorming, uh, for my blog, for example, I was going to talk about like working remotely and like traveling while I was working and things like that. But the more I think about it and the more like impact that I want to have, isn't necessarily on people who are working remotely and traveling. There are lots of blogs like that out there. Um, I might mention it sometimes, but I think that my niche is going to be really, open source instructional design best practices. Like that's going to be my very specific focus. So 
this is kind of a chicken or the egg situation. Do you pick your niche first or do you think about your audience? You kind of have to think about them both at the same time. So with this last, um, this, these last two sections, you can choose to do either one of these. You can either find your niche and think about like a few subtopics in your general blog category. Um, and you can brainstorm some topics if you want um, and identify which are fun. Um, or you can describe your audience. Um, for me, thinking about who needs my blog the most, who would be excited to read about open source instructional design best practices, um, that is easier for me than, than diving into my niche. So I want you to imagine the person on the other end of your blog. How old are they? What's their gender? Describe their family life. What does their room look like? Maybe what do they look like? <laughs> What's their occupation? What do they do in their free time? Where are they located in the world? So, I mean, th these are, I, I wrote with a little bit more detail because I thought we might run out of time, which we are. So head to your Google document, head to either number nine or number 10, maybe a little bit of both. We are running out of time. So I'm going to set a timer. Go ahead and start writing. Okay. There's more there, of course. I'm obviously still uh, writing myself, but you you have the tools, you have this, you can definitely take this with you. Um, so, not following my own advice, but by picking one person to follow, let's finish up by lastly thinking about your blog name, and URL slash domain name, right? So we've got five minutes left. Um, some things that you should be aware of. Um, number one, you can change your blog title later. Um, and also your, your site title and your domain name don't have to be the same. So for example, one of my, uh, my personal blog has a domain um, that's related to my name. Um, it's kind of like a play on words there, um, but the title of that could be anything that I wanted it to be. So I could be, you know, Sarah Snow blog, um, or but like the site title could be like Misadventures in Romance. I don't know <laughs> if that was a blog that I was curious about writing. Or I could I could probably use that name um, and my my domain name, Sarah Snow blog, and then a title about WordPress. I was thinking adventures in WordPress land, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, your domain name, so your www.yourdomain.com should be short and sweet. The shorter and more memorable, the better. 
Um, domain names themselves probably shouldn't be changed very often. Um, they can impact your site's search engine optimization later on. So if you rank highly in Google and then you say, hey, I'm going to change my domain from x.blog to y.blog, uh, it may cause problems there. So good titles, they grab people's interest, um, something that connects with them. And yeah, I, I feel like I don't have enough time to get into this the way that I want it to be. Um, but like, consider the difference between a blog called Thoughts on My Job versus Diary of a Teacher. One of those is going to tell you way more <laughs> about it, or misadventures of a teacher. That might be a fabulous one, right? <laughs> um, for other teachers to connect with and find. Um, yeah, so you can think about what you want your blog title to be. Um, think about like what sort of adjectives people use, what a pun work. You can use song lyrics and like loosely combine like adventures in WordPress land. Kind of sounds like adventures in Wonderland, right? So you can kind of see the motivation there. And man, I really want to talk about this, but I'm looking at the time and I need to respect everyone's time. So the last step in this is to pick your blog's name and a URL slash domain. So domain, look up. I usually use Google for this um, just, to, just to find it. You can use any number of services. You can use WordPress.com. You can use uh, GoDaddy. You can use all kinds of things, but you can always look for a donate domain. So let's see. Let's see if snowysarah.blog is available. You can go here, domains.google.com, and say, hey, does this exist? Is it available? If it does, you can definitely put that right there. So I'm looking at some final comments here. Can you add the blog to your web design site or should you set up a new site just for a blog? Catherine has answered that question beautifully. Um, but yeah, as long as your blog topic is related, then yeah, you, I would add it to the existing site. Google loves, search engines love it when you have a blog that is constantly updating. Um, on the one hand, if, or on the other hand, if your blog is about parrots and your main site is about, I don't know, what it was at physiotherapy, yeah, you'd want separate websites because they are not related. So I don't yeah. know why that topic came to <laughs> my head. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a completely unrelated topic. I could have totally... a better example. <laughs> cool. So, all right. So we're, we're coming to the end of this. Y'all have been amazing today. Thank you so, so, so much for exploring with us. You should have, oh, apparently I was writing in the wrong thing. I should probably fix that. Whoops. Um, this is what I get for this. Anyway, at this point, you should have a completed three to five page brainstorm. And you should be thinking about what your topics are that are fun for you that also resonate with your readers. You should be thinking about what really deeply motivates you, what you want to accomplish. You should have set some incredible goals um, that you can, of course, always readjust. So yeah, you have a, a whole action plan now for your blog. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. Sorry. I'm really excited. Like you all were just wonderful. So I did take, I did write a short survey. Oh, Hey, look, a call to action. Um, I did write a short survey about today. Um, many of you gave incredible feedback during today's talk, but if you would like to tell me a little more, tell me how today's session was one to five, uh, what your favorite part was something I could do differently next time. And then if there's anything else you would like to share, um, yeah. And then I definitely invite you to come to part two, if you enjoyed today. Um, part two is next week. I think at the same time, not tutorials, view online workshops. Um, and we will be looking at planning out, uh, your blog's content. So digging deeper into those, those topics and thinking about <laughs> what will resonate and what will not. So anyway, yeah. Any final thoughts, y'all? Thank you so much for I'm so glad that this was super helpful, especially hearing that from people who've been blogging forever and are like, yes, I'm a five, like hearing everybody's thoughts. You all really are the source of great ideas. So thank you for bringing them. <laughs> you feel so organized, Linda. That's so great. <laughs> all right. Cheers, everybody.
Oh, I meant to ask, do I, I feel like this was a little personal today. I think I'm just going to give y'all the link to this. I don't know. Any thoughts on that before we go? So just to clarify, Sarah, you're asking whether anybody minds if this recording is shared publicly. Yes. I feel like not everybody is here. Maybe I'll ask in the meetup group. I'm definitely going to share it with the members of this group. But again, this is this is a highly vulnerable thing to share your ideas kind of in the open like this. So, okay. All right. I'm going to think on it and I can always come back to it. All right. Cheers. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. <laughs> Bye. It was awesome. Y'all are wonderful. It's, it's awesome because of you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I still don't know where my controls are. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's why they were hiding behind my window. All right. Have a good one, y'all. <laughs>